We'll look at linear relations in this video. And um, there's two words here, linear. And in the word linear is the word line. So we're going to talk about things that are represented by lines. And really a relation is just, um, well, a connection between two different things or the way two things are associated. So let's consider the situation where we are paying to to park a, a vehicle. So say say you're going to go park a vehicle somewhere and let's say it costs two dollars for every hour that you park. Well we could represent this relation, this linear relation, in a variety of, of ways. One of the ways we could do this is I could just write a sentence. So I could use some words. I could say that the cost to park your car is two dollars per hour. So that's one way of describing the relation is to use words. Another way to do it is I could I could come up with a mathematical equation. So I could use equations. And I could say, let's say C represents the cost. So I could say C equals two times time. So in other words, the cost to park your car is equal to two dollars times the number of hours that you've parked your car there. Another way I could represent this relation is I could do what's called some ordered pairs. And really these are just some points or some situations um, uh, for this situation. So for instance, if I parked the car for one hour, if t was one, then the cost would be two times one or two. So these are a pair. When t is one, park for one hour, the cost will be two dollars. If you park for two hours, your cost will be two times two, four dollars. And so on, if I, I could write, if I park for six hours, the cost will be twelve dollars. So we could do some points or some ordered pairs. I could make a table of values. And my table of values, what I would do is I do a little column here. And I'd have um, the uh, sec here. I would have the time here. And I would have the cost here. And time, if I, if I parked for one hour, my cost would be two dollars. If I parked for two hours, my cost would be four dollars. If I parked for six hours, my cost would be 12 hours. So it's fairly similar to the ordered pair. It's just putting it into a, a table format. And we could also end up putting this thing in a graph. We could do a graph of this data. And we would, we would end up putting um, we'll talk about this a little bit later, what, what goes on, on what axis. But cost will go on this axis and time will go down here. And we would have one, two, three, four. And the time is in hours. And on this one we have cost in dollars. And I might go up by twos, two, four six, eight. So for one hour it will cost you two dollars. For two hours it'll cost you four dollars. For three hours it'll cost you six. And we could have a graph showing this information here. Um, So these are some of the w different ways that we can show the relations of, of uh, certain situations. Now in this example, I should probably, we'll talk about this a bit later too, but I should probably do a straight line through here. And this is not maybe a realistic type of a graph because now you're paying basically for every, every second that you're parked, you're paying a little bit, little bit more. But the idea is, is anytime you have a relation, you can express it in words, you could write it as an equation, you could put it as some ordered pairs, you could do a table of values, or you could do a, a graph. 
Now in this particular video we're going to only look at uh, linear relations. So let's see what the difference between linear and nonlinear relations are. Well we kind of mentioned this already and it's, it's pretty straightforward. The word linear has the word line in it so a linear relation would be a relation that would have a straight line. That would be a linear relation. So something that has when you graph it would have a straight line. Something that is nonlinear then obviously would be something that would have a bit of a curve to it. There's an example of a nonlinear uh, relation. It has a has a curve. Another way that we can look at a, a linear relation is by looking at our table of values. So if we looked at some x, y values, I'm just going to make some numbers up here. Say 1, 5, 2, 10, 3, 15, 4, 20. This is a linear relation because every time we go up 1 on our x values, we're going up by the same amount on our y values. We're going up by, by 5. So if we increase x by a certain amount each time, the y value needs to increase also by a certain amount each time. So going up by 1s, every time we increase by 1 on x, we're going to go up 5 on y, and it's the same amount every time. That makes it, that makes it linear. As opposed to a situation like this, let's say we started at 5, maybe we go to 10 here, but here we only go up to 12. And let's say here we go back down to 11. So here we're adding 1. All right, on this side we add 5, that's fine. Here we add another 1. We should be adding 5 here, but we only added 2. That makes this, this expression not linear. And I think that would make sense. You could probably see that when x is 1 and y is 5. And then we go 2, we need to go up another 5. This is keeping our line straight, if we want to use that term. Whereas here, the next point, so we go up by 5, that's fine, but the next point only goes up by 2. So that means it's not going to increase as much. And then here, we actually go down by 1. So obviously the, the points are not going to lie on a, on a straight line. So that's how we can tell uh, from a graph and from a table of values if they're linear or they're nonlinear. Now, what about the equation? Well, in an equation, if we're going to look at the different equations, linear equations only have exponents of 1. can only have exponents of 1 on the variables. So I'll give you some examples. For instance, y equals 2x. The exponent is only 1 on the y and x. You could go 3x minus 2y equals 7. That's fine. That's linear. You could even just have y equals 3. Those are all examples of linear equations. If they're nonlinear, then they're going to have other exponents on them, such as x squared. So the exponent is not, not 1. Or we could have y squared plus x squared equals 5. Or we could even have the square root of x. Remember, that means that's x to the power of 1 half. So we could have root x minus y equals 2. Or you could have x cubes, whatever. As long as there's some exponent some variable in there that has exponent other than 1, that'll be a non-linear relation. So that's how we can associate linear and non-linear relations in a graph. The graph must be a straight line for it to be linear. Otherwise, if it's curved, it's non-linear. In the table of values, whatever we increase by x, we need to increase by the same amount in y, so if we go up by 1s and x's each time, 
we need to go up by the same amount. In this case, the example was we went up by 5 every time in y, otherwise it would be nonlinear. And in an equation, the exponents on the variables must be 1. Otherwise, if it's something else, then it's a nonlinear expression. Now sometimes when we're graphing data, it can be discrete or it be can be continuous. Let me show you an example of the difference between the two. Let's start with the, some discrete data. Let's say the situation is you are selling, uh, let's say you're selling chocolates for, uh, for a fundraiser. And let's say the profit you make, and we'll make a, a linear equation here, the profit that you make is $1, well, let's do $2. Say two dollars, you're making gonna make a lot here. Two dollars times the number of chocolates that you sell. Okay, so profits two dollars times the number of, of chocolates. So if we were going to draw a graph of this, so this would be um, um, your profit here, and this would be the number of chocolates. Sold. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, just as an example. And on this axis, let's do our profit. $2, $4, $6, $8, So if you sold one chocolate bar, your profit would be two times one, $2. Dot. Obviously, if you sold zero chocolates, your profit's gonna be zero. Two if you sold two chocolates, your profit's going to be four dollars. Three, six, four, eight, five chocolates, ten. So I'd have these points on the graph. Now what's make what makes this data discrete is I would not connect these points up. Because if you did this, so let's just let's just do this here. Say I did that and connected these dots to make this nice straight line. Then really what this means is I could potentially sell half a box of chocolates and it would give me one dollar. Or I could sell a quarter of a box of chocolates and I'd make, what, 50 cents. But you can't, you can't do that. You're only selling one box or two boxes or three boxes. There's nothing in between. So that's why this data ends up being dis discrete. The points do not get connected because the only options you have are these whole number of values of chocolates. One, two, three, four, five, or I guess zero, and so on. So we would not connect these dots because you can't sell anything between four and five. You're either selling four chocolates or five chocolates. That's discrete data. When, when you're drawing the graph, you only have individual points because it doesn't make sense to have anything in between. You can't sell 3.3 .3 chocolates. But other, other situations, they are uh, continuous and we would connect the dots. For instance, look at this situation. Let's say we have um, the, uh, the temperature. So let's say on this axis, we've got um, temperature, outside temperature, and say so in like degrees Celsius, and down here we have elevation, and so in say meters. And you know that the higher that you go up, the greater your elevation, the colder it gets. So let's say <coughs> down at sea level, the temperature was up here at 20 degrees Celsius, and as we get higher, the temperature is going to get colder. So we might have a situation like this. And let's say this is zero. So let's say this is zero degrees freezing. So at zero meters, the temperature outside is 20. As you get higher, let's say you go up to 2,000 meters, the temperature might, might have cooled down to, say, seven degrees. But why we would connect the dots here is because elevation can be anything between zero and 2,000 meters. You could easily live at an elevation of 252.4 meters if we could have that precision. 
and also your temperature can vary. We can easily have decimals of, of temperature. So if it makes sense to connect the points, then that means that's going to be some continuous data. If it doesn't make sense to have the points connected because we can't have decimals or fractions of, of in this case, chocolates, then this would be discrete data and it would end up being plotted just as a series of points on the graph. So both of these are linear data. This is lying in a straight line, but it's discrete. We only can include the points that make sense. Whereas with the continuous data, it's possible to have any elevation and similarly the outside temperature can be any anything between, in this case, on our graph 0 and 20. Now there's a couple other vocab terms to know too. As you notice, in these linear relations, there's often two different variables. In this case, it was profit and number of chocolates. And one of these is the independent variable, and the other one is the dependent variable. Same thing over here. We had Celsius and elevation. Sorry, temperature and elevation, Celsius or meters. Um, two variables. And so the difference between the two uh, uh, is this. The independent variable is the variable for which the values are selected. So we're going to make some selection for these for these values. And the dependent variable variable would be the variable whose values depend. That's why it's called a dependent variable. So whose values depend on, on those of the independent variable. So typically when we're looking at this, here's our two variables, profit and chocolates. Profit, the amount of money that you make, is going to depend on the number of chocolates that are sold. So the number of chocolates that are sold right here, this would always be the independent variable. And P would be our dependent variable. The profit, the amount of money that you make, depends on how many chocolates you sell. Dependent variable. Now when you're plotting your graph, the the dependent variable always goes on the, your y-axis. So the dependent variable is always, we'll say, goes on the y-axis. And the independent variable goes on the x-axis. And I kind of think of it like this. If you write profit here, because you always label your, your, your um, axes, and number of chocolates down here, if you write the word depends on, then profit makes a sentence. Profit depends on number of chocolates. And that's one way of knowing where to put each one so you don't have to memorize it. This depends on that. The outside temperature will depend on your elevation. So the elevation would be the independent variable and the temperature how cold it is outside depends on how how high you are. Now if you're doing a table of values, which we looked at as another way to represent um, the variable, it's the independent variable that goes here. And these are just standard ways of writing it. Um, so for consistency's sake, mathematicians have said we'll plot the independent variable here in the table and the dependent variable will go here. So, if we were going to do a table of values for this one, we would be putting the number of chocolates n in this column and the profit would go in this column. So doing a table of values here, um, one chocolate produces a profit of, of $2. Two chocolates produces a profit of, of four dollars. So that's the independent and dependent difference between independent and dependent variables and these are just some of the different um, vocabulary terms and methods for for graphing uh, linear relations.